We have a special guest today, Stephen Dekowitz from Kessler Creative. Say hi, Stephen. Hello, everyone. Well, today we've got a couple of topics that we're going to talk about. Today we're going to start off a little bit of a blast from the past because, what was it, two episodes ago we were talking about the controversy created by the Google privacy policy. Yeah. Well, today we're going to revisit it because I saw something new online the other day, which I hadn't seen before. You heard about Google Glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw an article in Mashable. It was pretty wild when they were talking about these. When I first saw it, I said, what in the heck did Google want to do with glasses? Yeah, well, it was pretty cool when you start reading into it. So. I mean, it's actually like wearing your PC because right. the glasses, you can see through them. It's not like you know, the traditional glasses that you've seen for some of these gaming sets where you can only see what's on the screen. You can literally walk around with these things and see through them, but yet they can project images, they can project text onto the screen while you're walking. I don't know if it's interesting trying to cross a busy intersection. Wait a minute, and boom! No record. <laughs> well, the first time I heard about that, I said, you know, they're doing this so that when you're walking down the street and there's a restaurant over It'll here, flash it's going to draw up a special. It's going to happen. In fact, that was actually what they talked about. And so, like I said, that's why we're going to talk again about the privacy policy, because we had been talking about that. But can you imagine what's going to happen when you're walking and talking with a computer on your head? Just can't imagine. There was a movie that was that was out not too long ago with uh, Carmen Diaz and um, what's the guy who did Mission Impossible? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Tom Cruise. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. yeah, it was a mission. I forget, I forget what it was called, but everywhere you walked, since you had Minority, Minority Report. Right, Minority yeah. Report. You yeah. had these tags in the yeah. the commercials would come on anytime <laughs> you walked by. I think, in fact, on the back of a cereal box, it even had a live commercial right. that was on there. So that, but this is going to be something where you're going to be walking around with not only the uh, the computer on your head, but obviously you also have a camera built in, so not only can you see them, they can see you. Yeah, that's the scary part. That's where we get to Google's privacy stuff. Yeah, like I said before, you know, when you're talking about privacy on the PC, it's one thing, but I, what I was saying back then was I'm not so much concerned with privacy on the PC. I, I'm more concerned with the uh, the GPS chip that's embedded in my car and my, my phone, you know, where they can follow you around anywhere. And nobody's saying anything about that. Wasn't that long ago, they were trying to actually put that kind of same technology in laptops and so on. And I'm sure they're thinking about doing the same thing with tablets, with the widespread use of tablets. So my tablet has a GPS chip in it, mm -hmm. and all those things are trackable right. if, if you know how to use it. So uh, we live in a different world today, and it's changing rapidly. So I think that when the government agencies raised their, their head up and said, hey, what's going on, it was for a pretty good reason. Well, yeah, and, but like I said, you know, everybody likes to pick on Google because they're the, you know, the big kid on the block. But they're obviously the not. They're not obviously not the only uh, organization that's going to be using the information. Right. And in fact, even with Google Glasses, uh, when I was reading the article here, it was talking about at least two other companies, one called Vuzix and one called Lumis Optics, that are already working on prototypes of almost the same thing. So believe it when I say it, that it's going to be more than Google coming out with this type of technology. In fact. When you see this type of technology, this could be the thing just like with that made a big uh, splash with uh, being able to surf the web on your cell phones and the tablet PCs. Something like this could be the next evolution of the PC. So get ready for it. Yeah, it could very well be. <laughs> it's coming. Well, I mean, what was it? In Star Trek, they'd have the little thick clip on their eye or they'll have yeah. a little thing on their chest. Yeah. Essentially, that was their computer, so it won't be long before we have something like that. Um, I was doing some research on the Google Glasses. And there are a couple other companies that predate them. Um, there are products out there that don't have direct see-through, like you were saying, that right. they're computers that you can wear. Right. And they had down-looking glasses and things like that. Some might have a flip-up thing so you could look through it while you're wearing it. Um, you also were able to use them on airlines for a while, where you could plug into the airline and watch the movie with the glasses. Wow. So these are like. This is like a third or maybe fourth generation of those yep. kinds of products. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, it's just the next logical step. You know, one of the things they were talking about in one of the articles, they were talking about something called augmented reality. That's kind of scary just thinking about that, you know. But they're saying literally, you know, not only will you be able to, to you know, surf the web on these glasses, but you'll also be able to play games. So I can just see somebody walking down the street and you see them bobbing their head this way and that way because that's how you're actually going to work the mouse on it. You know, and, and if something's coming at you on the screen, you might be ducking. It's going to be very person, interesting. A first person shooter game. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you reach, reach, reach for their you know, wallet, you know, come out of the shoe. <laughs> then you know it's getting a little hairy. So. <laughs> but you know, it's still, if it's in the right arena, it yeah. could be a really cool thing. 
But it's like all technologies that are a double-edged sword. It could be really scary on one end, or the big brother, you right. know, yeah. tracking every little thing that right. you do, watching us in the bathroom yeah. when you're, because I know guys that, they don't go in the bathroom and read magazines anymore. They go in the bathroom and they have a tablet. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's their new book in the that's bathroom, it. okay? So if they had these glasses, now they're being literally watched in their bathroom, yeah. possibly. Well, they could do it right now with your uh, with your laptop. It's oh, got yeah, a well, camera on I, there too. It's a camera. Was <laughs> that it was that, it was that lawsuit several years ago that a guy uh, committed suicide because of, he was caught doing stuff on the on the video camera that guy posted on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, things like that happen all the time. But you know, we're, that's funny that you're talking about a two-edged sword, because one of the reasons that we invited Stephen uh, to be the guest was because one of the things that his company does uh, are email campaigns. Uh, you know, and, and speaking of a two-edged sword, there's been a lot of controversy wow. about the difference between what is a legitimate email campaign and what constitutes spam. The difference between a spam email blast and an opted in email blast is that person is expecting that email, that monthly special from that client, mm -hmm. or that product that they've either purchased in the past or have shown interest in, either through magazine subscriptions or past phone calls to that to that company. You know, that's someone who's who's awaiting that email, unlike Carl, who wasn't expected to get that email in the mailbox that morning. There's nothing like an opt-in account where people saying, I want your stuff. Right, I mean, right. I subscribe to Cabela mm -hmm. and uh, Sportsman's Guide and a whole bunch of other, you know, mail-order magazines. As a matter of fact, uh, last year I read this thing and there was 13.5 billion catalogs sent out in 2009. Wow. <laughs> okay? It's a and lot of trees. <laughs> that's a lot of catalogs being sent out. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your views on, on opt-in emails. I mean, I know that there are some companies out there who literally are absolutely predatory when it comes to, to the email spamming. Yeah, and then there's a lot of new laws, too, that they'll, they'll shut down your server. That's not something that you can do. Um, they're not selling email addresses anymore. And when you really think about it, emails are very sacred because how often do you change your email? You may change your phone number, you may change your address. You may but change your wife. You may change the wife. You may change the company you, you work with. You. But you're not changing that personal email address. And those are just so valuable, especially to these companies do, that do most of their marketing through an online-based right. um, uh, avenue, meaning email marketing, um, all your social media, your website. So it's something that is a very... Um, something you need to do, but something that, like I said, is black and white. You can't do the things that you used to be able to do. Right. I mean, that's why the opted in email is so um, specific of the questions that they ask you um, for the products that they're going to send you these emails for. So there are so many companies out there. Um, stay away from the ones that are trying to sell you the email list mm -hmm. um, because you have the, the, the option of having your server shut down and where they just shut down your server and you lose everything. Right. All that money you poured into that campaign is gone. Yeah. So how, how do you avoid crossing that line? We do opt-in an email. We do not do spam emails. We work through credit agencies that collect all this data, mm -hmm. meaning surveys, census, mm -hmm. a lot of self-proclaimed data. Right. Um, when you have a, uh, a four-year-old daughter and you buy her that Barbie Jeep and you know she's going to break the Barbie Jeep, so you go online, you put in that warranty to ToysRUs.com, right. you're going to get Toys R Us opted in email, email campaign right. because mm -hmm. you have registered that you have purchased a product there, you have children, right. maybe you make a certain income. So you can afford those products. Okay, now what does what does uh, uh, Toys R Us do with that email? I mean, they can take that email and sell it to a third party. They can. They can. However, it's not really being done anymore because it's such a valuable asset to them. Okay. Um, they don't want other companies soliciting you. Right. They don't want you to go and buy a Barbie Jeep from Walmart. Right. They want you to go to Toys R Us. Somebody's getting our emails from somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on. You you see those those emails that come in or they uh, those those surveys that say take this survey put right. it in your information and I'm going to send you that iPad for fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. A lot of the um, emails are being sold by companies like that. Right. They're not specifically for an email campaign. They're just collecting information so they can sell it to companies like Toys R Us or other companies that do predominantly email campaigns. So they're like an email processing house. That's yeah, I guess, you, can, guess you can say it. Yeah they, yeah, they just collect data and they sell it to the first one that's got their pocketbook. Sure, and obviously, like, you know, one of the sites I go on a lot of times is Two Cows, T-U-C-O-W-S. Because they, yeah. they have, I mean, just about every kind of software under the sun. And a lot of times you get freeware. So, you know, obviously somebody's going to put out something for free. They're going to get something out of you. At least they're going to get the registration information. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they, they can take that and resell. Yeah, every time that you put in any kind of personal information onto the onto the internet, mm -hmm. someone is taking that information and they're selling it to someone. Yeah, it's going somewhere. Yep, someone's making a profit off of your internet experience. Well, I, I tell people, you know, I, I'm the social guy, the social networking guy, and I tell people, you know, you're using all these networks. What you want to do is gather these people's information, but you have to understand that it's sacred information. 
It can be spreading it around. That's right. But if you're not gathering it and mm -hmm. then contacting those people mm -hmm. when they've said they want to be your friend, mm -hmm. you're losing out on a big opportunity. Right. That's why, like, you know, our company, we do email, I mean, uh, what do you call it, uh, newsletters, okay. usually every week or so. Uh, but, but those are only for people that are specifically registered to do the newsletters, and we don't sell the list. You know?